discrete event process simulation involves building a model of a system, a factory, clinic, hotel registration, warehouse, on a computer these days. The modeler then can experiment with the model, for example, by adding or moving operations without shutting down the real system. Several months running the system using the model can be done in a few minutes. These simulation models can incorporate supply disruption, cycle time variability, downtimes of different lengths, and other unpredictable events. The output includes both animation, providing a movie, not just a snapshot, of the system in operation. For example, is a buffer dangerously close to full or empty? And hard numbers, which statistical methods can use to build confidence intervals for system performance metrics such as throughput, machine utilization, and other financially important performance metrics. Now you all know the proverb illustrated here. The earlier in the life cycle of a factory, warehouse, or whatever, a simulation is done, the greater its potential value, return on investment, and ability to prevent severe problems later. Far better to sketch in another machine or relocate and resize a buffer on the back of a napkin than to shut down the real system, knock out a wall, pour some more concrete, and undertake other enormously expensive, time-consuming, and disruptive activities to correct production problems and bottlenecks after the actual system is in operation. Now here's a sampling of the many questions a simulation model can help the process or industrial engineer explore. An important concept underlying all of these questions, and many other similar questions, is the concept of sensitivity. How sensitive are important performance characteristics of the system? For example, average work in process, throughput time, machine utilization, and so forth, to a change in the system. For example, will increasing the size of a buffer from 8 to 10, that's a 25% increase, reduce the number of stockouts over a three-month period by 5%, 20%, 80%, or reduce the number of stockouts to zero? If arrival rates increase by 10%, by what percent will the utilization of a particular machine increase? Indeed, the utilization of a machine already at 95% utilization at the lower arrival rate cannot increase by 10%, although the percentage of idle time may decrease by 10% or more or less. Now, using simulation, especially for the first time, requires an investment in both money and learning. A software package, there's many, and we offer other webinars on how to choose, is necessary. The new simulation user may either buy a package or hire a consultant who has multiple packages to use. You've already begun the second item, by attending this webinar to learn what simulation can do. Basic awareness of simulation technology begins with the realization that the quality of simulation results is the smaller or lower of data quality and model quality. The results of a simulation project are no stronger than the weakest link. A key statistical issue involved is that of interdependence. A model will demonstrate very quickly that if, as an example, operations in series all have reliability 
the overall reliability is much less than 90 percent. Variability is another key issue. If, for example, the average queue length of waiting parts fits in the buffer, that's no guarantee the maximum queue length will fit in the buffer. Therefore, the simulation needs accurate data. No model can produce results more accurate than its data. Now, these are the five basic building blocks of a process analysis simulation. A source inputs raw material, or upstream input, into the system being modeled and investigated. A processor adds value by doing required work. At the modeler's discretion, a process may join multiple inputs from upstream or send multiple outputs downstream. Buffers are storage or holding areas where work items await attention. At a processor, the product construct represents finished grids leaving the system. A connection provides transport or movement between pairs of the constructs above. Now, leaving the PowerPoint aside just for the moment, we'll begin a demo of Autodesk Process Analysis 360. Let us build a small model now. I'll click New and we'll call this demo. The select, pan, and zoom icons perform those workhorse functions. Naturally enough, we first import a source block. I'll click it, drop it into the modeling area, hit escape, and we'll use, we could use select or just click on the source. And here we have the source properties to work with. We could rename it, which I would highly recommend. I would call it arrivals to illustrate renaming. Quantity that arrive, they can arrive indefinitely when this box is checked. The icon by default is blue. We get the output rate, and it's easy to change the time units to make sure they stay consistent. Seconds, minutes, hours, and days are available throughout the software. Now, we'll specify a buffer the same way. And for a buffer, we notice a capacity. And we also can specify thresholds in terms of percent. Now, if this capacity is a default 200, the software will warn us if during the run the contents drop below 40, which would be below 20 percent, or rise above 160, which would be 80 percent. Now, of course, a source has no input error. You might ask yourself, well, which one of these, which one, that has no output error? I'll click here and drag over, and we have a connection where we can specify for more detailed work load and unload time, time units available, the transport time, the lot size that typically travels on this connection, and how many of those lots, that's the capacity, the connection can carry simultaneously. Now I'll create a processor, bring that in. And a processor, oh, we have lots of properties here. The mean time between failures with a variability, the mean time to repair with a variability, scheduling options, 
And similarly, we saw the capacity alarms for the buffer, if it's getting near full or near empty. If the processor is very rarely in use or being used flat out, I can decide I want an icon to alert me of that. And I'll put in another connector, like so. We have the same capabilities there. And for the operation, we can specify a setup time, processing time, and the minimum quantity to produce. Now, at the modeler's discretion, the processor can simply receive one thing, add value to it, and send it on. But we also have the capability a processor can merge things from upstream or it can split things going downstream. And to complete this very simple demo model, I'll bring in an end product and we'll put in a connector. And we now have a complete model, very small one, and we can try running the model. This arrow does just what you'd expect. You can see things moving through the model. Utilization is increasing here. Little blue circles move. This will increase or decrease. Oh, there's one of our warnings. See, of course, using defaults, I've produced a very unbalanced process. But we see warnings here. This will produce or adjust the animation speed. That would reset the simulation any time I wanted to do that. And I'll run it very fast. And we have a check mark here. We have made the 200 parts we set out to make. And at this point, I can click on the reports. Let's view the summary report. The summary report is conveniently, it summarizes the model and produces both color charts of how Often, processors were in various conditions. For example, we didn't have a downtime yet. We get detailed statistics. We get statistics on how full or empty the buffer was and a timeline. Certainly, this would not be a good process. The buffer stuffed itself right up and stayed full. And statistics, likewise, on the various connections. So this demo of, very brief demo, admittedly, for a webinar, of this software gives a certain indication of all the convenient capabilities it has, both graphical and analytical. Now I'll close the demo for now and return to the PowerPoints and my colleague will now explain how this software fits into a very powerful software suite. So over to you, Chris. Hi, Ed. Thanks for that. That was a great introduction to it. Uh, what uh, we covered today was one small part of the much bigger uh, digital factory solution from Autodesk called Factory Design Suite. It covers a, a full range of products including AutoCAD, AutoCAD Architecture, Inventor, and many, many more. Okay, as we talked about, it basically, Factory Design Suite at its core lets you design your factory using 
pretty comfortable tools such as AutoCAD, but the power behind it of a 3D model and assets that are not just 3D but smart. So we talked a little obviously today about the process simulate. There's other simulation tools built into Factory Design Suite, uh, including some basic material flow analysis, some energy analysis, uh, factory air quality analysis software, a number of different products that come with the suite. One of the, the great selling features of it, for uh, especially for upper management, is the ability to see your factory in 3D. And it's not just a pretty picture. This uh, empowers you to know that what you're designing is going to work, it's going to go in correctly, and it's maximizing the usable space that you have. It also lets you bring in uh, point cloud data directly into the model environment, eliminating the need sometimes to actually have a complete model of your facility. You can leverage a laser scan, add your new geometry to it, and see how it's going to work. Thank you.